All right, foreign made primers, okay? Uh, with this ongoing shortage and the way things have been going on for over two years, primers are almost impossible to find. Okay, I myself have been using uh, primers that I've found at a halfway reasonable price that are 50, 25 years old. Okay, and the problem we had with the shortage is at one point in time, if you found a thousand primers anywhere about a year, year and a half ago, people would want $180 for them. And a few months ago when I was thinking of doing a reloading project, I was looking and you can buy primers on the gun broker, but the problem is by the time you pay the shipping and handling in Hazmat, they're going to cost you $150 per thousand. So as this is kind of easing up, I made a video the other week about it, we're seeing a lot of foreign brand primers come up. And the question is, are they good? Because notably, the one problem people have is a lot of light strikes or failure to detonate with these primers, okay? And not knowing the brand or never using it before, there's no way to tell. I prefer CCI myself. But if I have a gun that has difficulty in detonating a CCI, which would be like the Taurus Spectrum, the little 380 uh, striker-fired gun, if I use federal primers, which out of all the U.S.-made primers, everyone has told me for 30 years, if you have trouble with a light strike, which would be from having a trigger job done, go with federal primers. Problem solved. I put federal primers in my reloads and my light strike problem just about goes away okay but the problem is there was a time when I wanted to test this when I had a spectrum three years ago and when things were somewhat normal I could not find federal primers for over a year and a half and this is not during the crisis so a lot of guys go out and have tested these foreign primers specifically small pistol. These are the ones I use the most. I have five different brands here that I've gotten. I'll tell you the brand, the price, and then what I intend to do is go out and test these in some firearms that I have and see uh, how it works. Because when you search these and the other videos that you find the thing that's confusing is you find conflicting information. Some people tell you these damn things work perfect. Some people tell you half of them don't go off and they're gone. So we're going to get to the bottom of it and I'm going to try to give it a fair test. And I've got five different brands and I'll go over what I've got and the current cost of what I paid for. Okay. So let's start with what I have first. Okay, first up is these uh, Servisco Adventures. These are the Argentine primers. All right, and these small pistol primers and a local uh, shop got these in, uh, these here. And it cost me with sales tax, I didn't have to pay hazmat or nothing. These costs $75 for a thousand of these here. Okay, also at the same place, and these are made in Argentina. Also, uh, they had these Turkish, I believe these are from Turkey, ZSR primers. Okay, and that was 70, these cost $75 for a thousand. Now, there's some people that reviewed these and gave it a good review. All right, so we have this brand. Now another brand I bought, and there are a couple people that have done the brands, is a Russian brand of Mermont, I believe. And this came with everything. Now I had to order this, so I had to pay shipping and that. The actual price on it was $70, but I ended up paying with shipping and everything else and sales tax. $87.22, okay? And I went to another company, and there were two other types of primers, okay? And I ended up with, these are MKE 
And if you look at the way they're packaged, there are 200 in a sleeve, you got five sleeves, and this has been broken down. I believe these primers came more of an industrial type of deal, not commercial. These are packaged commercially for reloaders. I believe this was bought by a company that manufactures ammunition. Now this particular company is, again, in Turkey. All right. Uh, they manufacture weapons, and if you go to their website, there's 81 millimeter mortars, hand grenades. They do make ammunition. Okay, this ammunition was the stuff marketed by Walmart. Uh, was the company that made this, and what they did is they nickel plated steel brass or something. So these are the same primers that were used in that Walmart ammo that some people have discussed in that. So we got a thousand of that. And the next one, that was $100. Okay, this company, I, I had to pay more. Uh, the one company didn't charge me a hazmat fee. This company did. Henceforth, that's why uh, it came out more. Because these here were $70. Okay, between the hazmat, shipping and handling, sales tax, bumped it up to 100 bucks. And another one, and one that is quite common, you see a lot of these, is the uh, Genex, and these are made in Bosnia Herzegovina. But some of the ammunition I get from Bosnia Herzegovina, I believe these primers are used in the 9mm ammo, and as you've seen in my videos testing my pistols, I get light strikes with them. Okay. Uh, I paid 100 bucks for this, again, same deal. <coughs> Um, usually they come and that's where other people complain they want to buy some primers and you know they want a box of a thousand these usually come in a carton of five thousand alright and my local uh, shop had them and that's how they sell them they sell them in the case of five thousand I really didn't want to go with five thousand um, if they were no good, and of course, even without the hazmat going to pick them up, they would be slightly under a hundred dollars. It would be like four something, four eighty or something. So that would lower the cost of each of these to say ninety bucks or something. And I, I wasn't ready to go all the way for five thousand of them unless I tested them out a little. Okay, because chances are, if I really don't like these, uh, I could probably sell the uh, remainder off to someone if they want or whatever. All right, so those are the five different types I have. Okay, the five different types of primers. Now, I did see a video where a guy actually took these things apart and measured the thickness of the cups and all that other stuff and diameters and everything. Uh, and he did... Ramon, CCI, Fioshi, and I think Unix. I, I'm not quite sure. One of these, two of these. The variances in them are minuscule. Maybe a thousandths out of one, but they're more or less pretty consistent to the same size in the thickness of the cups. I think one of them was a little bit, a thousandths thicker than the rest of them, and all of them were pretty uniform in thickness. Depends what the material is or the quality of the material they're making the cups out of. Okay. This is another thing. During the crisis, the rush trying to produce this crap, quality control and materials, shortages of materials. You can get, uh, some people said with Fioshi, and those you got to buy 1500 in a case. Uh, one guy said he used some, and he were cool, good, no problems, and he got another batch later on, and he goes, the consistency isn't there. So that, I think, has to do with the shortage, not so much the quality of the ammunition in general, in, in good times. So, what are we going to do to test these? Alright, so testing. What we're going to do is we're going to go with 9mm Luger because I have an assortment of handguns uh, to use in the testing, okay? And also when I was testing my polymer frame budget guns, which are the most common 
pistol and most popular right now uh, are striker fired polymer frame handguns. Okay, so we're going to load some 9mm, and I already know the performance with different ammunition with the different guns. Okay, I have the Taurus G3C. Now, this pistol, it's a nice gun. It was probably one of the ones I got the best deal on and paid the least amount of money for. They're a good gun, but a lot of people complain these things light strike with certain ammo. Now, this gun functions flawlessly with certain types of ammunition, but it is also the one that light strikes and misfires with most of the common foreign-made ammo. So we're going to use this as a baseline. I know this gun doesn't like foreign primers, and it's evident. I have another polymer frame gun, this Stoger STC-9C, which this gun, anything that misfires or light strikes in any of my pistols, I load them into this gun, and this gun will fire them. Okay? Why is that? Uh, the problem with the Taurus, I believe, the springs are light. They lighten the springs to make them uh, the trigger pull nicer. But one guy said that he was looking at his and measured another striker or something. The quality control on the length of the striker, the striker on this might not, the firing pin protrusion might be a little on the short side. Um, but that is something I'll work on. I know this thing doesn't like certain primers, so we're going to use this as a baseline. I know this thing will fire any type of primer, so we're going to use that as a base, you know, to the other end. And another thing I've seen, somebody reviewing this particular brand, the guy used hammer-fired pistols. Okay, I have this Beretta uh, 51, 1951. Um, that's just an old-fashioned, you know, hammer-fired gun. It's a little bit different. It's not a, uh, it's not a striker-fired polymer handgun. So I've got an older gun. It's a different system. See if that gets affected by it. Okay. So that's what I intend to do. There will be a video uh, where I show you how I prime it. Because a lot of people complain that some of these go in real hard, that the diameter or something may be off. Uh, so I'll show, I'll show you where I prime the brass, and I'll discuss that point of how difficult or it is to get them in there. Some people have found that these brands are extremely hard to seat the primer in the cases. Okay, we'll discuss that. I'm going to use a standard load of bullseye and... Uh, 115 grain uh, full metal jacket bullet, just my standard reload, okay, that I developed just for target shooting. Not a defense round, not a plus P, just a standard little load. And we're going to take them out, shoot them, and see how these primers work. Uh, because if you go around and look at the different videos, if you go around and look on the forums and reloading forums and all the other stuff, you will find anything and everything in the comments to where some people say these things are absolute garbage, I have a huge failure rate in my gun, uh, they're difficult to seat, inconsistent. Some people say that they're just plain duds in there. Their the primers are dead. Okay. And I'll address these issues just how they see and how they work okay and i believe the problem is like i said i've watched several videos on a couple of these brands and a lot of it depends on if you only have one gun or one type of gun because uh, one guy did uh, a video on these where he said every single round went off but the one key thing is every single pistol he had was a hammer fired gun. Okay. So we'll look at that in the end. But so I'm gonna do some testing and each one will have so it'll be five different videos testing these different brands. So stay tuned and I will make a 
playlist of foreign primers so that way look for the playlist and then all the videos will be in order all right thank you and stay tuned